Exercise 20, Unit 3, Human Body, Part 1. There are 20 muscles in the foot that give its shape by holding the bones in place. The main muscles include the anterior tibial, which allows the foot to move upward. Then there is the posterior tibial, which supports the arch, as well as the personeal tibial, which controls the movements on the outside of the ankle. After that comes the extensors, which help the ankle raise the toes, which initiate the movement of stepping forward. Finally, there are the flexors, which help stabilize the toes against the ground. Smaller muscles, however, enable the toes to lift and curl. Tendons, which are tissues, in the foot connect muscles to the bones and joints. The strongest and largest tendon is the Achilles tendon. This is the tendon that connects from the calf muscle to the heel. This tendon allows us to jump, run, and walk upstairs, as well as allowing us to stand on our toes. Ligaments hold the tendons in place and stabilize the joints. The longest ligament is the plantar fascia, which it forms the arch on the side of the foot from the heel to the toes. This is what gives the foot balance and helps with walking. That is the basic anatomy of the foot. Health Science 20, Human Body, Part 2. Your ankle is one of the most likely places to experience an injury to a tendon. Falling or repeating the same movement during sports or daily activities can cause pain due to ankle inflammation or tendonitis. What is tendonitis? Well, tendons are the strong cord-like bands that link muscle to bones. If a problem occurs in the tendons, tiny tears develop. Along with this, inflammation occurs. This is a well-known sign of tendonitis. Some main types of ankle tendonitis occur in these areas. The Achilles, which causes discomfort in the Achilles tendon. The posterior tibial, which causes pain on the inner side of your ankle. And finally, the peroneal tibial, which causes inflammation along the outer edge of your heel. The body's normal response to an injury is to send extra red blood cells that carry oxygen and nutrients required for healing and they send white blood cells to fight off infection. Waste products, like inflammatory chemicals, are then taken away. This helps the healing process, but only for a short period of time. However, if the area is repeatedly irritated, the process keeps going, resulting in the continued inflammation, which is described as tendonitis. When you suspect an injury, you should get a proper diagnosis. Health Science 20 Unit 5, Diagnostics and Treatment, Part 1. There are four main causes of tendonitis. Number one, overuse. This commonly occurs when the tendon is worked too hard or repeatedly stretched. Number two, injury. This can develop after a foot or ankle injury, for example, a sprain. Number three, abnormal foot structure. This can include a high arch or a flat foot. Number four, Medical conditions. This includes inflammatory conditions such as gout and rheumatoid arthritis. There are three main types of symptoms. Number one, pain. This is usually the first sign there is a problem. It includes sharp or burning pain. Number two, swelling. This usually takes a while for swelling to develop. Number three, stiffness. As a result of tendonitis, stiffness may occur. This limits the amount of pain-free movement. To diagnose the tendonitis, the healthcare provider asks about previous medical history as well as questions about work, activities you participate in, and sports that may be the contributing factor. Next, they perform a physical examination, evaluating the range of motion and tenderness of the affected area. This includes checking standing posture, gait pattern, and shoe wear pattern. There are four main motions that occur at the ankle joint. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion. It is important to check these motions. The next step will include having x-rays done. They may be taken to determine if another condition may be causing the pain. Using an x-ray, 
can determine if arthritis or a fracture is the cause of the pain. On an x-ray, bone appears white and air appears black. Tissues appear various shades of gray. The x-ray tech would be able to examine the x-ray of the foot and see if there is a fracture. Just by looking at the x-ray, it is possible for the x-ray tech to determine what is wrong. Sometimes it may need a more extensive look. However, x-rays use radiation waves, which cause cancer. Luckily, x-rays are quick, easy, and inexpensive. The average exam is about 10 to 15 minutes. Another option is having an MRI. Although this is usually not required to diagnose tendonitis, an MRI uses radio waves to create detailed images of organs and tissues in your body. Unlike an x-ray, bones appear black and air appears white. Health Science 20, Diagnosis and Treatment, Part 2. Treatment is important when you have tendonitis. Doctors may recommend the following. Avoid walking or running on hard or uneven surfaces. Doing low or no impact exercises like biking, or swimming. Icing your ankle three times a day for 15 to 20 minutes. Stretching your ankle gently and regularly. Wearing a brace or boot. Eating healthy and maintaining a healthy weight. If none of the above treatments don't significantly decrease your pain in two to three months, surgery may be required and may be your best option. Surgery can remove or repair inflamed tissue and eliminate any bone spurs that may be irritating your tendon. Health Science 20, Unit 2 Nutrition Part 1. Healthy connective tissues support your ability to move, exercise, and lift objects freely. In addition to medical treatments, physical therapy and rest, eating healthy is important when it comes to healing tendons and ligaments. Some foods that promote healing include colorful produce, fish, walnuts, and flaxseed. Fruits provide essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Vitamin C, for example, helps your connective tissues heal. It may even reduce inflammation associated with tendonitis. It also strengthens your immune system's ability to fight off infection. Some fruit that is particularly high in vitamin C includes oranges, strawberries, kiwis, cherries, and mangoes. Along with fruits, vegetables provide rich amounts of protective nutrients like vitamin C. Red bell peppers even include more vitamin C than fruits. Other vegetables include tomatoes, spinach, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. Fatty fish is also important. They contain sources of omega-3 fatty acids. These healthy fats promote health and may reduce inflammation associated with connective tissue. Some examples include salmon, tuna, lake trout, and sardines. Along with fish, walnuts, and flax seeds, uh, they contain omega-3 fatty acids as well. However, flax seed also contains significant amounts of fiber. Fiber enhances satiation and may ease appetite. This is important because when you're trying to lose weight, you want to be satisfied. Body weight can strain your ligaments, joints, and tendons. So other than eating these types of foods, maintaining a healthy weight overall is important. Some ways to keep healthy include following the Canada's food guide, eating the recommended food for your age and gender, as well as adequate amounts of exercise can help maintain your body weight. Health Science 20, Unit 2, Nutrition, Part 2. Some diets you could follow could include high protein diets. Eating protein after an injury is important because potential muscle breakdown can offset the amount of protein you have. However, since meat is a key part of protein, vegetarians may have a harder time achieving a high protein diet. Some other alternatives to a high protein diet could be a high carb diet. Carbs supply a sufficient amount of calories, but consider cutting back after a week or two. Supplements you could take to help could be fish oil, amino acids, and HMB. Other than supplements, including foods high in zinc could help as well because it helps with healing wounds. Overall, there is definitely many steps and options you could take in order to achieve faster recovery. Health Science 20, Unit 4, Career Exploration. I chose to do a physical therapist. 
When it comes to treating and healing an ankle sprain or tendonitis, having physical therapy can be really important to achieve healing your ankle faster. A physical therapist will help with showing you ways to improve mobility and help you with techniques on how to relieve pain. In order to become a physical therapist, you must graduate from a physical therapist educational program. Courses you would have to take in high school as well as university will include biology, chemistry, and physics. There are also some specialized courses you will have to take like biomechanics and therapeutic procedures. In order to become an official therapist, you must be licensed. So you will have to take a physical therapy exam. In Saskatchewan, you can go to school at the University of Saskatchewan. It takes about six to seven years to become an official physical therapist. When it comes to actually having the job, you would make approximately seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars a year, and about thirty-five to forty dollars an hour. So, a day in the life of a physical therapist. Well, things you may do include examining patients and reviewing their medical history. Testing and measuring patients' range of motion, balance, posture, and strength. Determining whether a patient can go back to work or not. Developing treatment plans. A physical therapist usually works in a variety of settings, including hospitals, private clinics, schools, and sports and recreational facilities. Physical therapists usually work about a 40-hour week. This can include working evenings and weekends. Although a physical therapist helps with the healing process, they may have a lot of problems themselves. Physical therapists often have to kneel, crouch, lift, and stand for long periods of time. They also have to lift heavy equipment and help patients getting up, turning, standing, or walking. Overall, a physical therapist is an excellent career option and you get to help with problems like tendonitis. Health Science 20, Unit 1, Healthcare Philosophies and Ethics, Part 1. Western Medicine. So Western Medicine is traditionally the most common use of medicine. It is when you go to a hospital for a diagnosis. This is based on scientific findings. When you go to a doctor to diagnose tendonitis, they may suggest ibuprofen, like Advil, physical therapy, and maybe even surgery. Complementary and alternative medicine. CAM medicine is the term for medical products and practices that are not a part of standard care. However, some researchers don't know how safe these practices are. Things you could do to help with tendonitis include massages, ice, especially after the injury, rest, flexibility and strengthening, indigenous medicine. This is medicine that has been used by Aboriginals for a very long time. The healing process focuses on mind, body, and spirit. This medicine recognizes more roots to healing like talking, crying, laughing, sweating, etc. This medicine uses herbs and animal parts. Some herbs you may use to treat tendonitis include willow bark to relieve pain. It is similar to aspirin, licorice, to reduce inflammation. Traditional Chinese medicine. TCM originated in ancient China and has evolved over thousands of years. TCM practitioners use herbal medicines in various mind and body practices. Some ways to treat tendonitis using TCM include acupuncture because it stimulates circulation and cooling herbs can reduce pain and swelling.